colour. You have a mug and then you pour in the hot liquid and the mug changes colour. I'm not quite sure what the purpose is, probably just so you know when your tea's gone cold, but that's probably helpful enough. But I've been thinking lately about change. We live in changed times, don't we? Just think about what life was like two months ago and compare it to what life is like now. You go into town and half the shops are closed and the other half have got queues outside. And then everybody's walking around with masks. They all look like a group of bank robbers about to attack the place. And we have to stay at home. And we understand why we stay at home. It doesn't stop us feeling frustrated or lonely or whatever, but we understand the reasons. But it can be, at least for me, frustrating when you can't get together as a church. We can't get together for a coffee morning. Our churches aren't meeting. It's, and perhaps now we're beginning to recognise what we had and what we're missing. But life is all about change. The British have a reputation for talking about the weather. And that's because the weather is always changing. It's a lot more interesting than the weather they have in some parts of the world. And then you listen to the weather forecast and all they tell you is it'll be changeable today. And then we're all growing older. There are things you can't do today that you could do 20 years ago. I'm sure you can think of a few of them. Yeah. Then, do you remember when you were back in school? In no, secondary school? And how when you were in school, the first years got smaller every year because you were changing. But what I want to remind you is that God does not change. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. In the book of Malachi, it says, I, the Lord, do not change. So you, the descendants of Jacob, are not destroyed. Among all the changes we experience, among all the changes that are going on now, God stays the same. He is our rock our unchanging rock. And in these difficult days, it's all too easy, I think, for us to start focusing our thoughts on what's happening, upon the virus, upon the dangers of, of getting ill. You notice it in the way that people pray, that they'll pray for uh, their own protection, they pray for their family's health, they'll pray for those on the front line, and there's nothing wrong in that praying like that. But the danger is that we take our eyes off God and we stop looking to Him. We become fixated with what's going on in our own situation, our own family. So I want to encourage you this morning to be looking to God. Because God doesn't change. He is our anchor. He is our fixed point. He is our security. He is the one we can rely upon. So what does it mean for us to say that God doesn't change? Just a few things. First, it tells us that God is eternal. God is forever. He had no beginning. He has no end because to have a beginning or an end would imply that he changes. And God has a name, the name Lord, if you look in your Old Testament, written in the tiny capital letters. It's the name Yahweh or Jehovah. And it basically means I am. It was the name that God announced that he had when he spoke to Moses at the burning bush. Because God is the great I am that I am. He is the one who always is. He is forever. Secondly, God is unchanging in his purposes. He doesn't change the plans that he's got for us. It says in Jeremiah, 
for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Now, sometimes we don't understand what God is doing in our lives, why he allows certain things to happen. But that's when faith comes to play. Faith holds on to the truth that God is good, that God is unchanging, and that God is working his purposes out for our good. And therefore, Romans 8.28 remains true today as it was this time last year. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Thirdly, God is unchanging in his love. His love doesn't increase, it doesn't decrease. God's love doesn't change because he gets in a bad mood. He doesn't get out of bed on the wrong side. So perhaps you've had a bad day. Maybe you've sinned. Maybe you know that you've let God down. You're ashamed. Do you think then that God loves you less because of that? No, because God doesn't change and his love doesn't change. He loved you before you were saved because it was his love that meant that he sent Jesus into the world to die on a cross, to take our sin. He loves you today, he loves you tomorrow, and he loves you for all eternity. Fourthly, God is unchanging in his holy wrath. God is opposed to sin, and he always will be opposed to sin. That's why we need to have our sins forgiven through faith in the Lord Jesus. Because if we don't come to Jesus for mercy, for grace, for forgiveness, then we will face God's unchanging wrath forever in hell. And fifthly and lastly, God is unchanging in his commitment to us. Now I've got two favorite words in the Bible. Uh, one's in the New Testament, one's in the Old Testament. In the New Testament, my favorite word is the word grace. God's unmerited favor. Salvation is by grace, by grace alone. It's undeserved, it's unearned. It's the free gift of God. In the Old Testament, my favorite word is the Hebrew word hesed. It's the word mercy. In Psalm 23, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. It's a tricky word to translate. There's no direct equivalent word. Different Bibles use different translations, loving kindness, love, mercy, and so on. But it speaks of God's covenant love his special love that he has for his own people. Now you might love children. You might say you love all children, but there is a particular love that you have for your own children. And God has a special love for his children. He has a special love for those who have been saved by the Lord Jesus, who have been adopted into his family and belong to him. That's his hesed. Because God has bound himself to us in love. He has made promises to us that are unbreakable. In Psalm 136, every one of the 26 verses tells us that his love, his mercy, his hesed, endures forever. It is unchanging. It is eternal. It is unchanging and eternal because God is unchanging and eternal. And so in these uncertain days that we're going through, isn't it good to know that God is unchanging? That he is reliable? 
that he is trustworthy, that he will not let us down. Even he cannot let us down. He is our rock. He is our anchor. He is our firm foundation. And that's why he says to us, look to me and be saved, all you ends of the earth, for I am God and there is no other. Let's be looking to him and trusting in him, for he doesn't change however much the world around us does. Thank you. Amen.